Hi, thanks for joining me for this video. So my name's Nicole from iPad Calligraphy. Procreate 5 came out recently, as you probably know, and we've been deep diving into some of the biggest feature changes. So Brush Studio was a big one. That's what we're looking at today. We're gonna to make a new brush and we're going to utilize the color dynamic features so that it changes color with pressure. So you can also download the brush for free just under this video description. But if you want to follow along, you can make your own brush. We'll be getting a general overview of Brush Studio. We'll create our new brush. We'll use color dynamics to introduce those color changes. We'll also add a shape source and grain. So I'll show you how to do that. We'll also set a revert point on the brush. So if you make any changes down the line that you didn't mean to, or you wanted to edit the brush just to experiment, you can always jump back to that point. So I'll show you how to do that. And also how to add your own name to the brush so that you can autograph it. Excellent. So that's a lot to get through. Let's dive in. So here I am in Procreate. I have a document size 3000 by 3000. That doesn't matter so much because we're just testing out this brush. I've got a black background. So I'm gonna come into my brush library and just create a new set by tapping on the plus sign. If you don't see the plus sign, just scroll down the set list and it'll appear. So I'll name this color D for color dynamic brush. There's two ways you can enter the Brush Studio. You can either tap on an existing brush and go ahead and edit it, or you can add a new brush by pressing the plus sign. Both ways will bring you into Brush Studio, but the only one that will give you the import option is if you had tapped on the new brush. That will allow you to then import any custom Procreate brushes you might have on Dropbox or iCloud. When you first create a brush, Procreate will go ahead and assign a shape source and a grain source just to give the brush a render. This is just the default version and this is actually a good place to start when you want to create any brush and make some changes. Before we get into that though, let's just look at how the brush studio is laid out. So this left column here is the attributes. These are all just the brush attributes that you have access to and you'll notice when I change this, this middle column changes and reflects whatever we have selected. And the third column here is your drawing pad. So this allows you to preview the brush as you're creating it and also see how the strokes interact with each other by building up a few. If you want to clear the drawing pad, you can either tap this clear button at the top of the drop down when you press the drawing pad button or you can three finger scrub and that will just remove anything on the drawing pad. Right, so back to creating our brush. Procreate explains the difference between shape and grain really well in their handbook. So they say it like this. Grain is the texture that sits inside your brush shape. While the shape acts as a container for the grain, the grain acts like the paint roller. When you paint a stroke, the grain is rolled inside the shape and onto the canvas. So we're gonna start by changing our shape source. You can see this little small edit button in the corner that will bring you into the shape editor. I'm going to press on import here and I have the option to import a photo, a file that will take me to my Dropbox and iCloud. Otherwise I can choose from the Procreate source library or I can paste from my clipboard. I'm going to choose source library to keep things simple and I'll choose blotch this is in the, in the second row here. Once you've finished, you just press done. So now I can already see those changes reflected in the drawing pad and I can see that it's given it a bit of a rough edge to the texture, which is cool, that's, that's looking good. And I might just play around with this a little bit more. So that's just making those edges a bit more jagged, so that's cool. If you prefer your numbers to be rounded up, the cool new feature now is you can type in the numeric value straight into the field. Previously we had to scroll this up and down and up and down incrementally until we got the number that we liked but now you can just type it straight in there and the slider will adjust. Next we're going to take a look at grain. So if I go into grain and edit I can do the same again and choose import. I'm going to go to the source library again and I'm going to choose grunge on the first row here. Now I'm not sure this image might repeat already but just to explain as we learned from Procreate's description, the grain is the texture that sits inside your brush shape and it'll be rolled onto the canvas inside the shape. So what happens sometimes 
is you might see a seam. So if your texture, if I come out of here and look at the preview here, if you're using a texturized brush, that's basically going to show you exactly the grain as it is. You're basically just revealing the grain. And if you're using a image that isn't quite a seamless pattern, you'll start to see the seams because Procreate's just going to duplicate that image and put it down this way and this way. It'll just create a pattern out of this square. So what we need to do is make sure that that pattern repeats nicely. And one of the great new features of Procreate 5's Brush Studio is the grain editor. So if I go into auto repeat, I can now see how that repeats. And you'll see that the grain is this part. When I start to move these sliders, you'll see that we've got three across the top and three down the, the side. And it's just looking at how they interact with each other when they repeat. So that's really cool. You can rotate them. So you have a certain darker part. You can make sure that it's in a certain spot. You can also scale it and the border overlap. So that just overlaps the images so that they're seamless. So this is a fantastic addition. It's really saved some time. Previously, you know, brush authors would have to go into Photoshop and create that seamless pattern in another program, but now we can do it straight inside Procreate. And I don't think it's ever taken less time. Creating seamless patterns can be a nightmare. So this is just fantastic. I'm gonna change my grain behavior back to moving though for the purposes of this brush. And that's coming up nicely there. So I'm happy with that. So next we're gonna skip ahead to the color dynamics attributes in order to make our colorful brush. So I'm just gonna clear the drawing pad here and choose a color seeing as we wanna see how it interacts with color. So you'll see the properties are divided into stamp color jitter, stroke color jitter, color pressure and color tilt. And this is how it will activate the color changes. So with stamp color jitter, what's basically happening with your stroke, if I make a stroke here and now turn that spacing right up, you'll see that your stroke is actually made of set loads of different stamps. So what's happening with the spacing is it's just spacing them very close together so that you don't see the different individual stamps. But when we're playing with color dynamics, we can actually introduce a second color into the stamp so that it sort of flickers and you get a really nice effect, especially if you're using two colors that are quite complementary together or that might, you know, you could use a, a yellow and it sort of looks like a golden flicker. I'm gonna turn my secondary color right up to the maximum. Now it's easier to demo this outside of Procreate, but if I come into here, you can see this has two colors. Where's that second color coming from? So the secondary color is defined just in your colors panel. This is basically in every single panel except for palettes. So you'll find this secondary color option just here and you can change the color by activating it, change the color and then activate the second one, change the color and now you'll get those purples. So it's really useful to have full control because some of these color dynamic changes are quite well dynamic and you don't have a lot of control over them, but with this secondary color you do, so that's really cool. So that's not quite what we're going for today though. We want something pretty bright and colorful. So we're gonna use stroke color jitter just to show you what that does now. So if I bring this hue right up and choose a color for my stroke, so I've got this purple selected, it's even changing the color that I had originally selected. So there's not much control over this. It's just gonna basically change your color with every stroke. So you can adjust the darkness by the slider here. You can make it lighter, darker, sat more saturated, less saturated. So that's really cool. We'll knock those back as well because now I wanna show you the color pressure. So I'll clear the drawing pad and color pressure will turn the hue up on that and the saturation a little bit. And now take a look at that. So now as I ease into the color, it changes the color. So as I lighten my pressure, it's changing color. So we'll put that at about 50. We'll bring the saturation up to about 30. So that's creating a very cool dynamic color brush. We could also add a bit of tilt in there as well. So when you tilt your brush, you're also going to get a change in color. So that might give you the option to just add a bit more control into when you're doing it. It's both tilt and pressure. So you're getting those changes. 
So we'll just make it a little bit more vibrant. I'm just gonna make sure that hue is really maybe even 100% on the hue so that it changes quite dramatically. There we go. So that's quite colorful, that brush. And because we've got it on tilt now, you can even bring it in. There's no pressure sensitivity in terms of the thickness of the stroke, so it's a monoline brush, but that just allows you to have some fun with the color. You can even change the color that you're using, that will have an effect as well. So it does reflect the color that you're using and uses palettes and tones that work with that color, so that's really cool. And I'm also going to bring it in on the stroke, stroke jitter a little bit too so that we can kind of get a lot of variety in the stroke itself. I'm using quite a muted color. So if I change that to a bright color, there you go. We're getting some really interesting color changes. So before we finish up, we just want to name our brush now. So if I go into about this brush, I can add a name just by tapping the untitled text there. That allows me to type a name, I'll just call it color dynamic. And then made by, I could even choose an image here um, and I can type my name in made by. So I'm gonna put iPad calligraphy. And I can sign. Now, another thing you can do here is to create a reset point so what this means is this brush is now set at this point. So if I came in here and made some other changes, perhaps I made the spacing really thick and started experimenting with other things here and then I decided I didn't like that, I can actually reset the brush just by doing reset. Now I've set that reset point, I can reset the brush back to where it was. So that is really handy. I just wanna run through the other attributes that we just skimmed over. So you'll see you've got stroke path. We briefly looked at that. Streamline basically corrects your stroke. Jitter just adds a little bit of change in the stroke. You can look into all of these. Taper adds a, small, a, a smaller point so that it tapers at the beginning and then moves into the full width. So you can add a taper. Shape and grain, we looked at those. Then rendering, so rendering adjusts how your stroke reacts with the canvas and each other, so each of the strokes. So the blending focuses on how the colors mix together and how you can create a wet edge or you can give color burn effects. So wet mix gives you more control over how the paint interacts. You can, you can adjust the charge to mimic a brush running out of paint. And there's also a setting for dilution as well, which means how much water is mixed in with the paint of your brush. So the color dynamics we looked at. Dynamics is all about how your brush responds to movement. So using quick gestures will look different to if you were painting slowly. The Apple Pencil is basically adjusting the pressure. So you could add your pressure setting here if you wanted to make a pressure sensitive brush. And you can also adjust the smoothing, which gives you more control over the strokes. And the Properties section allows you to change the way your brush preview image looks in the library and how your brush responds with screen orientation, whether it reacts to change in orientation or not. Great, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I've got another video about how to import Photoshop brushes if you're interested in that. Otherwise, I'll see you next week where we're gonna check out Animation Assist.